Hello, Dominic from BMT Spain, website for beginners to advanced players. Now, first of all, thank you for all the comments. I'm not used to have so many reactions on my videos. There were good reactions, there were bad reactions. I have no clue what I'm talking about. But I'm also happy for the bad reactions because I have learned from critics that you evaluate yourself, is what I say correct or not? And for avoid discussions yeah, about the subject, yeah, the subject is, is the wrist movement, will the wrist position change towards contact? Or will the wrist stay in that laid back, like position or locked in position yeah, towards contact? And I will use two videos from other YouTube channels. One is from an ex-professional player and the other one is from a person that calls himself a tennis doctor. So professionals and doctors, they should know what they're talking about. So let's check out what they say about the wrist position. Okay, my wrist is back and it needs to stay back until the ball has left my strings. Okay, my wrist is back and it needs to stay back until the ball has left my strings. I follow through, my wrist is back. At contact point, I hit the ball with my wrist back. And then once the ball leaves my strings, it's important that I relax the wrist. Because this shape here, that is your leverage. That stays locked in from a lock-in position to contact. And only long after the ball is gone, the wrist disengages from a lock-in position to contact. And only long after the ball is gone, the wrist disengages. Now, if you have heard what I have heard, one is asking to stay in that laid back position here, here in contact, after contact, and once the ball has left long, you can start to release or relax the wrist. And the other one talked about the locked in position. You have to stay in that position. It will give you leverage. You're in that locked in position and contact, after contact, and then you can start to release the wrist. This is what I have heard. And for that, I made the videos. No, not possible. You will have wrist change or wrist movement towards contact. And I showed pictures from professionals making contact between a 30 and a 60 degree angle. But there are still people not convinced. They think that professionals can fix it yeah, without using a wrist change position. Now, I have here a tool for the video of today, which I bought 20 years ago already to show my students that you cannot play with the fixed wrist if you want to have racket head speed yeah there will be movement in the wrist if you want to whip your forearm yeah which will give you racket head speed you cannot do that with a fixed wrist so this tool i can connect here with my strings and from here now i can take my eastern forearm grip and i can pull my racket back so now i'm here in my leg position, laid back position or locked in position. So if I'm going to play, now I cannot move my racket. So there will be no um, confusion. Yeah, it is he use or not. I cannot move my wrist. So I have to be in that position, my complete stroke. So you're going to watch a video from the back to see where the balls are going and from the side to see if I'm really hitting the ball in that 30 to 60 degree angle. So let's check them out. Now we are going to watch the underarm position. And as you can see here, this is close to a 45 degree angle, but we can also see that the racket head is way too much behind the wrist. So that ball can never go to the other side of the court, but it will go to the side fence every time. And we can see that here from the back position, I have also here that 45 degree angle, but the angle of the racket, everything will go in the direction of the door. And if I want to play to the ball in the court on the other side, I have to change that racket position, which at that moment I would only be able to do by using my wrist. So let's check out what the balls are doing without the tool. So now I'm going to unleash the tool and play the same motion, yeah.
so here I want to play the ball in the corner on the other side so this is also the reason why you see here that my underarm is more in a 30 degree angle if you want to go down the line you will be closer to a 30 degree angle if I would wanted to play cross I would have more a 60 degree angle but if I would have that angle with the tool I would not hit the door I would even hit the small table yeah, because of the angle so I would hit the side fence sooner now if I want to play down the line in a 30 degree the only way to get that racket in the right position is by using my wrist so I have to change the wrist position to be able to get the racket in the right position to be able to play in the corner We have seen that every ball I hit it with the tool, I hit it in the side fence. And once I released the tool, all the balls, they went into the court. So for me, more clear, I cannot explain you. Yeah. Will the wrist change towards contact? Yes. Maybe you do it unconsciously. Yeah. But we at BMT, we practice it consciously. We turn the racket against the ball, we flex it into contact. And like everything that you practice, yeah, after a while you start to do it automatically without thinking. You start to do it unconsciously. If I go for the ball, I'm not thinking, Oi, I have to use my wrist, I have to flex it into contact. No, I just go to the ball and play my forehand and it starts automatically yeah, that the wrist change. I have to change, I have to change it for that direction, I have to change it for that direction. So the conclusion again for me, is there wrist change in the forehand towards contact? All I can say, yes. And I can also say, thank you for watching. See you in another video.